Hello viewers, welcome back to Silo Space, the engineers and navigators hub. A special thanks to all the returning viewers and everyone that subscribed to Silo Space. Also, I welcome all the new viewers. Please subscribe to Silo Space and click the notification bell to be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Today, I will be talking on life-saving appliances on board ships. Um, we have different types of life-saving appliances and they have various functions on board the ship. Um, moving forward, um, life-saving appliances, my fondly or mostly called LSA, are those appliances that protect human lives at sea and they are very handy when there are emergency situations to help the survivors. It is very mandatory on board ships as a requirement by um, SOLAS Convention, that's the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea, that ships carry require life-saving appliances according to the ship size and the crew on board the ship. So today we'll be talking on the different types of life-saving appliances, their uses, and the different signs and markings that um, is used to signify that particular LSA on board. Um, normally, there are lots of life-saving appliances, but I can classify them under some subcategories that will help us in identification. So I made my classification under five subcategories. The first one, I have the personal flotation device, um, which have examples such as life buoys, life jackets, immersion suits, anti-exposure suits, and thermal protective aids. The second one, we have those classified under the visual aid or mostly they are being called pyrotechnics. Um, we have example like parachute fleas, the hand fleas, and the buoyant smoke signals, and also the line drawing appliances. Then the third category, I can classify them under the survival craft, where we have examples such as the life raft, the life boat, and the rescue boat. Then going forward, we have um, classification of of those LSAs under breeding apparatus. We have the self-contained breeding apparatus, and we also have the emergency escape breeding device, mostly called the SCABA or the EEBD. Then the last um, category I will be classifying this LSA for easy understanding is the communication system, where we have um, examples like the handheld. VHF radio, the emergency, and I, I classify the communication system and the um, distress signal um, together. So I, I have also the emergency position indicating radio become fondly, um, commonly called as the EPEP. Then we have the search and rescue transponder, commonly called the SAT. Then we have the general alarm and also the public address systems. So moving forward, I'll be explaining these LSAs individually from the subcategories. So stay till the end as we um, learn about different LSAs. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Silo Space, like the video, share to friends and drop your comment. I would really love to hear from you. Stay with us as we proceed further. So the first on the list is the Life Boys. Um, they are life-saving appliances designed to be thrown to a person in water to, pre to provide buoyancy and prevent drowning. Um, modern life buoys are fitted with um, self-activated uh, light to aid rescue at night, or some, are, uh, some use this reflective material that reflects at night to um, allow and ensure that rescue operations can be done at night. Um, some life boys uh, also use um, lines, while some have, they are connected with self-activated lights and also have connecting lines. This is to allow the casualty to be pulled to the rescue in a boat. So um, basically, the life boy is mostly used for the man overboard drill or in the man overboard emergency. So they are always fitted around the perimeter of the ship's weather deck and they are 
they are supposed to be thrown rapidly whenever the um, any man of board incident happens that means they have to be fitted at both port side and starboard side of the ship in case the man of board um casualties occur either at port or starboard a life jacket is a sleeveless jacket of um, buoyant or inflatable design meant to support the wearer in deep waters and prevent the wearer from drowning so the life jacket must be able to give enough buoyancy and improve the possibility of survival of the wearer that is it must help the wearer float on water so life jackets are fitted with whistle um the whistles are used to grab attention of rescuer around and they are also filtered with light to illuminate the environment at night for each for easy rescue so this light um, activates themselves when they come in contact with water but most um, life jackets are also have these reflective um, materials also to that can also go in case they don't have a um, light it can also help to um, brighten up the situ the, play the environment or you can see illuminate the environment to uh, enable the casualty to be spotted out especially when it is at night but also importantly um, the construction of a life jacket or test of a life jacket must be such that the life jacket can withstand a jump from a distance of 4.5 meter height without getting torn or giving injury to the wearer during that process then the thermal protective age is made up of aluminized polythene material with heat seams which protect the wearer from cold and prevent hypothermia so the the main difference between the someone will say the immersion suit and the thermal protective age what is the um, what is the differences the thermal protective age is more like for example, if somebody was immersed in water and the person is being brought into the life raft and is excessively cold. So the, the, the personnel can actually wear a thermal protective aid to prevent the amount of heat transfer from his body. Meanwhile, the immersion suit can be worn before even entering the water. The immersion suit is a waterproof dry suit used to protect the wearer from hypothermia if immersed in cold water. Hypothermia is a body temperature below 35 degrees C in human beings and is actually very dangerous. So uh, let's assume there is an abandoned ship in a mother ship. So it's been advised that personnel wear immersion suits before if they have to jump into the water to board a life raft or a lifeboat, wearing an immersion suit will help um, retain your body heat and prevent you from um, having cold when you are immersed in that um, excessive cold environment. So we move to the next subcategory, which is the visual aids and pyrotechnics. Um, the first one on that list is the parachute flays. So the parachute flays is designed to fire a single red flay um to a minimum height of 300 meter in the air so it's also activated to produce this intense smoke for a period of about 40 seconds or more then while it's descending down a parachute opens up to reduce the rate at which it descends down that's to enable it to have more time for the for the flare to be very visible at the height so this helps to give a clear view to nearby ships or rescuers or help that may within that may be within that vicinity to help the survivors in a rescue boat or in a life in a life sorry in a lifeboat or in a life raft. The next one is the hand flays. Hand flays are small cylindrical sticks, which when activated produces an intense red smoke or light for at least a period of one minute without an explosion. It should be held out leeward when activated and it can be used both day 
and night next on the list is the boyan smoke signal it is held in a compact container with a boyan nature so that it can float on the water surface as it gives signal to in distress situation it is mostly used by day to indicate the position of distress with a bright orange smoke and also it helps in determining the wind direction for rescue so this buoyant smoke signal can produce an orange smoke for a period of three minutes or more but their ignition has to be carried out manually okay and then we have the line throwing appliances um, the line throwing appliance is a counteracting equipment used in distress situation to make a connection in terms of a strong line between the distress ship and the safe ship. So it's more like using it to create a bridge um, between the two ships to pass on towing lines or other kind, any other kind of help. Um, the line throwing appliances can launch line that can reach over 230 meters towards any distressed person so we move on to the next category that's the survival craft we have the life raft under this category so they are stored in heavy duty fiberglass container and contains high pressure gas to allow automatic inflation to the operation size they are located normally located on master stations port and starboard near the lifeboat forward and aft of the ship but basically the allocation generally depends on the size of the ship it is being released with the help of the hydrostatic release unit connected to the life raft container and the ship respectively this helps to release the life raft if uh, in scenarios example where the ship sinks into the water and survivors are, are had already um, jumped into the water and swam to a very safe area the life world will still inflate itself due to the help of the hydrostatic release unit when it comes in contact with water um, mostly on the life raft we have description description that are clearly stenciled on the container can be the capacity of the life raft which is very important how many people can contain in the life raft we can also have the manufacturing date, the servicing date, the company that um, produced the life raft, and most importantly, the launching procedures are always um, printed on the life raft and in a pictorial display for easy understanding. Meanwhile, most ships carry a David launching system, which allows the crew to inflate and port the life raft while on the ship's deck, and this is very good because it prevents the personnel from having to jump into the water getting cold before boarding the life raft so it prevents the risk of going into the water and being cold in the first place but if there is no david then the crew have to jump and board the life raft so we have the life boats um, the lifeboat um, is a small, rigid, or inflatable boat carried for emergency evacuation in the event of an abandoned ship. So, when there is a disaster on board a ship that requires the personnel to abandon the ship, then the lifeboat comes into play. So, they are secured on board into David so that it can be launched over the side of the ship with the least possible time and mechanical assistance to ensure early escape of the crew from the ship and also their safety. So lifeboat are classified into different types. So we have the open lifeboat, we have the closed lifeboat and we also have the free fall lifeboat. So still on the survival craft category we have the rescue boat. These are small lightweight boats designed with the aim of rescuing people in distress and towing the survival craft such as life rafts and buoyant apparatus. For example, um, we have the man overboard emergency on board the ship. Even when the life boy has been thrown to the man overboard, um, a rescue boat is launched to pick up the casualties and take them back to the um, to the mothership and you can also use it to retrieve buoyant apparatus like the life boy also 
so they are designed to be launched in the least possible minutes and must remain stable when recovering a person in the water from either side of the boat that's the main reason why they are light weight they are usually david launch and come in different shapes and sizes the material used for construction is usually fiberglass with addition inflated rubber buoyancy chambers this is specifically for extra stability because you'll be using the rescue boat to get another to get a casualty so moving forward to the next subcategory of the breeding apparatus we have the scaba and the EBD we will start with the scaba that's the self-contained breeding apparatus it delivers one to provide breathable air in an atmosphere that is dangerous to the health and they can last for a minimum time of um, 30 to 50 minutes depending on the usage is it being used for work environment is it just being used for training and mostly they're being used in firefighting and areas of, of um, working areas where there is oxygen deficiency then we have the emergency escape breeding device that's the EBD it's used when you have to leave to leave an area that has become dangerous or life-threatening immediately the EBD lasts for a period of uh, about 10 minutes that 10 minutes it, the compressed air is enough to carry the crew just to exit that environment both the SCABA and the EBD are self-contained uh, are self-contained have self-contained compressed air which apply the crew breathable oxygen and helps them survive or escape from contaminated area on the ship but there are um, some unique features about them like the EBD has to be stored where it is very feasible and easily accessible for the crew and it must be marked with the correct um, with the correct indication so a crew knows that that is an EBD and and note should be taken that the EBD lasts for 10 minutes while the self-containing breeding apparatus lasts for like 30 to 50 minutes at, mo at least depending on the usage of it and also the EBD can be used for firefighting because it or it work at um, working in any other um, environment where there is um, insufficient oxygen because it lasts the air compressed air supply can last for a period of 30 to um, like 50 minutes, which can, which is more than that of the emergency escape breathing apparatus. But since the EBD is just 10 minutes, it just to aid you leave that dangerous zone for a time being and go to a safe environment. So as we continue, we'll be talking on um, the category of communication system. So the first one under this category is the handheld VHF radio. So um, the VHF there stands for very high frequency. So this um, handheld VHF radio is used as a backup system to the ship's own, the ship's radio, which is a fixed one for intership communication on large vessel and also on light raft. The VHF radio is a self-contained unit and it is simple to operate. Also, the communication go both ways. It uses um, direct waves as its mode of propagation. So that means the ship had needs a VHF radio and the life raft also needs a VHF radio for communication purposes during distress. For the general alarm, I've already done a video that explains other alarms, including the general alarm, their distinctive sing, um, signals, and why it is being sounded. So you can check on that in the description. There is a link that can help you um, learn more on that also. Okay, the next one, we will talk about the public address system. So basically, it's an electronic system that... Um, consists of microphones, amplifier, loudspeakers, and other equipment. The main function is it helps increase the volume of speech of a human's voice or musical instrument or any acoustic sound. 
so if i want to make an announcement like for abandoned ship the master has to um give the verbal command of abandon ship abandon ship normally i'll not hear what the master is saying from the engine room but with the help of a public address you could hear from wherever you are on the ship if the um, if the public address system is used the sound is being enhanced as it's louder than a normal human being's voice would be okay the next on the list is the emergency position indicating radio beacon commonly called the EPIRB. The EPIRB is a device used to alert search and rescue services in the case of an emergency at sea. It serves as a tracking equipment that track, transmits signal on a specified band to locate a lifeboat. It can either be a life raft, it can be a ship, or generally people that are in distress. So um, the EPIRB has a unique identifier number which is programmed into each beacon at the factory and because of this uniqueness the EPEP cannot be transferred from one ship to another because if an emergency occurs and the EPEP is used a wrong ship will be will be identified and this can cause unnecessary confusion or delay in the rescue procedure also the hip has been mounted um somewhere that in the event of emergency it is capable to float from the vessel Therefore, if the vessel sinks it should be able to float most times it's mounted on the superstructure so um, this unique identifier number holds information such as the ship's identification the date of the event, the nature of the distress, and the position of the ship. So if I transfer my EPEP to another ship, they'll be getting that um, the ship's detail, which will cause unnecessary confusion. So how can I activate this EPEP? It can be done automatically when it comes in contact with water, or it can be um, activated by pressing a button on the unit. Okay, finally, on this communication category, I'll be talking on the search and rescue transponder, mostly called the SAT. So, um, these search and rescue transponder are brightly colored, self contained, they are waterproof electronic device used for emergency at sea. Basically, they can either be a radar SAT or a GPS based. AIS SAT. AIS means automatic identification system. So why do we have a bright color in as its characteristic or features of manufacture? This because the bright color aids for easy detection in the water and it all the the SAT is a very important equipment that must be on board because it helps in locating the position of the vessel when there is an emergency and probably the vessel goes off track so also a good feature of the sat is the waterproof nature so this waterproof nature prevents the sat from being damaged the sat component from being damaged by water Mo and basically the sat um, uses battery as its power system so if water comes into in contact with battery definitely the sat won't work again so the waterproof nature of the sat helps um, protect the sat from damage they can be used on ships, on lifeboats, and on life rafts. So, a unique um, features of the SAT will make it very good in tracking vessels which are in distress is because it has a combination of the transmitter and receiver system, which enables it to transmit signal as well as receive radio signal when they are being activated.